Hey everybody, it's right at six o'clock. We hope that uh, you're excited about tonight. It's gonna be awesome. Want to welcome you back to the Plus One webinar. Tonight, we have our friend Ben Baldus uh, here to talk about cows and cow runs. And we have loaded up a ton of runs for us to review tonight. Hey, a special call out to Stock Horse of Texas for putting on these great programs for us. I've had wonderful feedback from many people who have watched it live and then replayed it home. So without Stock of Our Horse of Texas, we sure would miss out on some awesome training opportunities. Not many times can you ask a question of a live speaker to get your question answered. So Ben, thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited about talking about some cow work. Yeah, yeah. So, so Ben, have you had any recent runs that you think you might want to share what you were thinking about or what it felt like? You know, a lot of people don't run down the fence and know how exhilarating that can be. I just wondered if you had anything you might want to share with the group tonight. I think one of the things that comes to mind for me over the last uh, decade of showing horses and learning to get on the fence and becoming more proficient at it is uh, just through the experience, some of the wrecks I've had. Uh, I fell off one time at Pueblo, Colorado, my stirrup broke and I came off and uh, landed in the middle of the arena after a fence turn holding my stirrup and fender and asked the judge if I could have a re-ride because my tack broke. <laughs> you don't get a re-ride, they just ask you to exit and try again next time. <laughs> and in uh, some other times when uh, maybe I had a horse that was a little out of position and uh, slipped and fell, uh, some, some of those heartbreaking situations or when a cow sets up before the middle and had some of those uh, sad situations where you, you don't make the finals because you, your cow didn't quite do what you hoped it would. And then over the last probably five years of really honing in on my fence work and practicing and reading cattle and really working on my angle towards the boxing and fence work, feeling more confident and feeling some of those runs come together um, to get back to the finals, marking some, some larger 222s and 223s at different times, uh, being reserved in the world on Papa this year, and just having some runs that really came together with horses that were really reading a cow well, that I read the cow well, and feeling that horse's power and desire to help you work a cow. And that's a, a feeling unlike any other when you're both on the same page at an extremely high rate of speed in complete control, completely safe in controlling that cow. And, and that's fun, unlike anything else. The real connection. Really, uh, what I hope we can convey through this, this webinar, and we can look at some videos and talk about that tonight. And, and really everyone feels more confident working their cow and feels more aggressive and more in control and safer in all that they're doing with their cow work. Yeah, because we all like to chase cows. I, I remember when I first started working cows, like all I saw was like this fuzzy creature. Like I didn't, it had four legs and hair, but after a run, I couldn't tell you what color it was, okay. what, which way it was going. But then of course, the more that you work them and the more you can read them, which we talk a lot about reading and we'll talk about that tonight, the more comfortable that you get. And, you know, they, they tend to start to be a little predictable majority of the time and it's the odd times where they're they're really not so i'm so excited for folks to be able to learn uh from you tonight thank you i'm looking forward to it we're gonna have a great conversation and uh, just talk about some of the tips and techniques and what we look for yeah so what we thought we would do tonight uh, ben is that we would just start with with um one class and then we'll progress so we will start with boxing where you can help us understand what we're trying to accomplish when we're boxing a cow and then we'll go to our uh, box drive, box drive class. And, um, and then we'll, we'll do a fence class. And then we'll just talk about all the different things that come up with the runs that we have. That sounds wonderful. Okay, so folks, as we go along, if, um, if we start talking about something and you've got a question, if you would please type it in the chat. Um, and then we will we'll get to those questions when we can. Or Jill's going to be there to answer as many questions as she can. And then we'll do a question and answer at the end. So thank you for that. Jill, why don't we, um, why don't we start with boxing? Like really where it all starts for our cow work.
All right, Ben, help us what you see when this cow comes out and this horse and rider work. Wonderful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in here so I can see this a little better. Um, what we're what we're looking for is is a horse and rider that really control the cow from the moment that cow enters into the arena. Um, a couple of little things on the boxing: the cow will usually follow the gate, so that gate open to our right or the rider's right, so the cow comes out toward the right, anticipating a right turn. And this rider is being aggressive, stepping up immediately and taking control of this cow. Uh, we're really liking how quick this horse is right and left and how aggressive this rider is being is stepping back into this cow. When we talk about time worked in the box and that's an area sometimes if a rider is really lagging behind or waiting on the cow, then we're not getting a real feel of the time worked. And, and this is a horse and rider that we're seeing being very aggressive, stepping right in to take control of that cow. Um, you know, in, in the, on the eye appeal area, if this horse is working kind of on a loose rein with its ears up and uh, it has a lot of expression, then we like the amount of eye appeal and aggressiveness this horse is showing. Uh, I liked how this horse um, stayed what we call loaded up or rocked back on its hock while it was working a cow. This horse had a lot of natural draw about it, staying back in its style. Uh, we like a horse that has that and a horse that, that reads the cow and mirrors it. We're really looking for a horse to work the cow and stay nose to nose with that cow's move. And thinking about that, a string being tied from the cow's nose to the horse's nose. Right there, we can see that horse and cow in a perfect mirror reflection of each other. It looks like they're dancing together perfectly. Every time that cow's nose starts, the horse comes through it. And then as we get working, like right here, we get a little bit late and maybe that horse shouldered into the turn a little bit if I was being real picky. But overall, like this run exhibits a lot of control and a lot of eye appeal to this run, a lot of time worked. And even as we near the end of this work, we have a, a place over here on the right side where that horse misses the cow a little bit right here. And he kind of missed that turn, but quickly recovered and jumped right back on it to regain control of the cow. So Ben, right there, you talked about he kind of missed the cow. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are like, what is a miss? Could you just try to demystify the miss? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, where this horse has a, a lot of quick movement left and right, um, you'll notice over here on this right side, what we also call or describe is like the, the cow gives the horse a head fake. And that, that cow looked back towards the cow's right, which would be behind this horse. And the head moved one way, and then the body went the other way. And right here, that horse misses that move. And it's actually prior to the cow nearing the wall that this horse takes the head fake and the cow gets to shoot towards the wall. Um, and one of the things that I think about in that situation, if, if I'm over by the side wall in my boxing, I want to limit the amount of extra cutting my horse does on the side wall because it's an area that we will often get beat. If we're up against that wall and the wall is to my right nearing the wall and the cow gives me a head fake, my horse has to be extremely accurate to block the wall again before it runs to the other end of the arena. If my horse takes the fake on the wall, you're going to lose it every time and get yeah. beat. So I really think about safetying up and slowing my horse down, trying to get the cow back to the middle of the arena. So if, I, if my cow starts dragging me to the corner, and ultimately I think of that as the control, if my cow is over in the corner with its head stuck in the corner and my horse is facing the fence, did I really stop the cow or did the cow just run all the way to the corner and the wall stop the cow? Yeah. So therefore, if the wall's stopping the cow, I'm not controlling the cow. And then also if my horse does take a fake, I'm gonna lose it down the wall. Yeah. So for me showing, if I get over in the corner, I am trying to slow my horse down from cutting and I'm trying to drive the cow back to the center of the arena. 
and work it on the center, on that center gate. So if I get a fake over there, I have room to get around it and not lose it down the wall. Yeah, and for our intermediate, our limited non-pro, our non-pro and our open uh, riders, they have to be able to drive that cow. So if we get into a corner in our corner cutting, which is risky, mm -hmm. yes. it's a good chance to drop, to really work on driving that cow back to the center. Yes, yes. And again, what we're, we come back to all through our rule book and through the judge's score sheet is ultimately controlling the cow. How did you control the cow? So if you're like towards the end of this run, we're over on the right side of the arena in the corner, cutting it in the corner, our horse is now a little out of position. Our cow is dictating where this run is happening and, and we're not controlling the cow as much as we were at the early part of this run. And our rider's aggressive, so it gets around the cow and, and it, it fixes the problem, but that could just as easily have gone from a big marking 74 kind of run to losing the cow and marking a 68, just because we allowed the cow to go to the corner and we tried to cut it in the corner versus driving it back to the center and having complete control. That's awesome. And a, and a miss, I, I believe, is like a one point penalty. Um, and so, but that little miss, she, she was more out of position and it probably hurt a little bit on the overall score, but the mm -hmm. penalty didn't really, the penalty wasn't a huge penalty. Correct. And, and the, the easiest way to describe like the penalty being in effect is truly uh, when the cow is pointed one direction and the horse is pointed the other way, right? So cow's head to the right, the horse jumps all the way to the left and is pointed the wrong way. It's like, oh, wow, he really missed that turn. He missed what the cow was doing there, and the horse reacted by jumping the wrong way completely. Yeah, great, great way to think about it. Jill, let's, uh, let's uh, load up another one for us in the boxing. That was awesome. That was a, a really fun run to watch. Thank you. Uh, you guys have to apologize. I have the sweetest neighbor bringing me farm fresh eggs. <laughs> so she's coming to the door to drop eggs off. She's the wonderful neighbor. So this run that we're seeing as the cow comes out, um, it is starting off just far more relaxed. And again, you're wanting to really show that judge that you're here to be aggressive and you're here to take control of the cow. Relate, notice that we're not a perfect reflection of this cow anymore. The cow is, is almost two full seconds ahead of this horse. And, and what we're noticing is that we're not really having the control that we did before. The cow's kind of dictating where it's going to go. This horse, as he turns to the right, you guys will notice the horse actually turns away and rides away from a cow. And in this situation, this cow's on the wall and the horse is riding away, giving ground. That's slowing the run down and allowing the cow to dictate where it's going again. Here, the cow's going all the way to the corner and our rider's not really stopping the cow from going to the corner. And again, there, there may be times when, when your cow is so wild, all you can do in a sense is try to survive it. And sometimes you're working a long ways away trying to survive. And, and if you're sitting well in other classes, maybe surviving the boxing is the, is the correct game plan <laughs> for that horse and rider in that situation. Uh, other times, uh, like right here, we're late and we're riding away from this cow and the cow's not really challenging us, but we're just giving ground and riding away. Well, that, that kind of starts to become a, a loss of eye appeal, a loss of working advantage. Uh, we're getting out of position and really just taking our overall run uh, down in points right here from where we started at a 70. We start to move towards that 68 or 67 on this type of run just because we're not showing that aggressive control of the cow. And then we kind of get into, into our eye appeal a little bit because even here, this horse's head comes up a little bit as she starts to help it. We don't see that horse working nose to nose with the cow. So really, according to our handbook and our rule book, we're looking for that cow sense. 
And this horse isn't exhibiting a lot of cow sense for this run. Uh, it's listening to the rider, it's going where it's told, but we're not seeing that ears up, brightness, alertness, that attentiveness to the cow as if it were a bird dog on point out hunting. We're not seeing that type of intenseness towards a cow. Therefore, we can't plus our eye appeal category. You know, we're gonna be towards the minus on the eye appeal for this type of run. Yeah. So one of the things that, that uh, I know people ask a lot about, and I think we'll see it on this next run, is when those cows have somewhat become trained to come out of the back gate and then immediately look for the hole to be circled you know, back through. Um, as a showman, and we'll see this maybe on this next video, it would be very helpful. How would you position your horse so that when that cow comes out, you can catch it to really prevent it from going from one wall to the other wall, like right off of the bat? Like, do you have a strategy for that? Yeah, great question. Um, we, I always look at which way the gate is entering or opening to the arena because the cow is likely to follow that wall. So the gate swings in towards the right, the cow's gonna come in towards the right. And, and as, as myself, I position my horse at a 45 degree angle towards that corner. Oh, okay, great. Yep, so if, if the cow is coming out towards the right, then I position my horse at a 45 towards the right corner. So now I am in a line to intersect the cow as it comes out. Right. And I also am aware of where the cattle have been staying that night. So depending upon the arena setup, it's either right behind the chute where they're coming out or maybe it's to their far right side of the arena. If the cattle are coming out or they're staying the night on the far right side, they're gonna be pushier towards that side of the arena. And I make a mental note of that to tell myself, I'm gonna to have to be very aggressive on this right side of the arena. And that's gonna be with my cow side leg and both feet driving this horse to a place in front of the cow to stop it from going all the way to the corner. And that's the place that I'm gonna to need to gain control of this cow right away and stop this cow from going all the way to the wall, all the way to the corner. And that's my job as a, as a competitor and a showman to get control. And it's gonna to be tougher going to the exit gate and softer going to the other gate. So that helps me balance getting in front of or staying slightly behind the cow's shoulder. Ultimately, the cow is looking where it's gonna go. So you're thinking of riding to a place that stops the cow. So if the cow comes out and he looks to the corner to your right immediately looks at the corner, then you need to think about riding to a place in front of him and kind of getting his attention to where he's looking at you, not at the exit gate. Uh, also, if the cow comes out and the cow in a sense looks right past you, like its tail is straight in the air and it looks right <laughs> past you, then you better stay away and try to catch it. You're just playing defense at that point and trying to block the cow from where it's looking. He's looking for a way around you and the horse. And if he thinks it's to his right in front of you, your job is to ride over there and block his view, block the exit that he sees. So then the cow stops and turns the other way. That's right. That's it. They, they, they're real good at telegraphing what they're thinking too. That's uh, right. They really are. Jill, let's queue up that next one and see what this cow does coming out of that, that back gate. So again, this cow comes out, moves towards the rider's right, towards that corner of the arena. And, and we, at this particular horse, like we take a, a, a wide right turn and we ride all the way to the fence. And I would like to see this horse ride towards the cow a little bit more to gain the cow's attention to say, hey, I'm here and I'm pushing this cow. And on this horse, like stay behind this cow, maybe drive it farther to the left side of the arena. So this cow again wants to hang out and keeps moving to the right. See how we're only working on the right side of this arena? Well, I'd like to see this, this horse step in and drive this cow maybe past the center gate this time and try to hold it in the center. But we're, we're stopping there at the gate and always going back again. See how we're fading away? 
the farther we fade away, it takes the pressure off and that cow learns to stand in the corner. So if that cow gets a release of pressure with his head in the corner, he's gonna keep going there. The more the rider rides away and releases the pressure, the more that cow is gonna to go to that corner. Notice we're riding away, we're taking our time. The cow's sitting there, the cow's like, oh, this is the best place for me to stand. I get to relax. So really step in and push the cow to the left side of the arena to exhibit the control over the cow. You know, it's, it's interesting. We, if we saw maybe 30 runs about this time in this particular class, in this arena, it wouldn't take very many runs to see what the patterns were. And it'd be easy to differentiate yourself um, by saying, wow, those cows always seem to, to hover to this particular gate. What can I do to, to take better control of that cow? Um, because it, we've just seen two runs right here and the cows were pretty predictable with what they were doing. And they're always drawn uh, one direction or another, no matter where we are. That's right. One of the things that I always try to do, uh, if time allows it, is, is get to the cow pen and watch, uh, I must say, a set or two uh, of the cattle and really study the cattle. Because depending upon the type of cow that, that comes out really depends upon how aggressive I'm going to be, how much I'm going to step up and get close to the cow or whether I'm going to stay away from it. And as an example, the two cattle that we've seen are Black Angus cattle. Uh, they, they're probably coming off a feedlot. They're a little bit more sluggish. This particular set's uh, very docile and moving towards the gate. And they just want to stay on the wall. They're just happy to look for the way out of the arena. So if you watch two sets of this type of cow, you can tell yourself as a showman, I need to be super aggressive. I need to step right up there, almost at my end reigning marker when I call for this cow. And I need to step right in front of its face and be really aggressive. And, and there may even be some times where I'm gonna move my horse a little bit more with my feet or my hand lightly to exhibit that my horse is very athletic and my horse has a lot of cow sense because this cow is very soft. And this is what I would describe as some softer black angus type cattle and we need to be really aggressive if however i get the, the practice pen or the cattle pen i watch two sets and they're all uh f1 tiger stripe bramas and they've got long ears that drag the ground and tails that come up over their back and they look like they can run 100 miles an hour and i watched six horses and three of them got ran over and lost the cow to the other end of the arena and i know the horse i'm about to show is kind of slower lead footed built for some swampy country he's a little slow then I'm telling myself, stay back and be really accurate. Don't do any extra moving. Don't do any extra fancy stuff. Just stay away and slow this cow down. And, and really by staying away, you're taking the pressure off that fast wild cow and you're, you're saving your run so you don't get beat. Because sometimes if the cattle are tough, it just comes down to who survived the best today right I love you that. might win the class with a 71 because you survived better than everybody else did yeah but reading the cattle and studying what's coming out of the gate are they mostly charlades are they heifers heifers are going to be sensitive and feely are they steers are they big uh 600 pound steers that are numb and dull and you have to get right in their face and really take control uh are they tiger stripe brindles are they herefords what type of breed are we working? Uh, what kind of size? If they're uh, very, what we call slab-sided, tall, slender cattle, they're gonna run really fast. If they're short, stocky, English type cattle, they're not gonna run as fast, but they're gonna be really quick left and right. And, and really studying the cattle will help you show your horse better. Yeah, and in the beginning, if you're just starting out, you know, there, you can watch cows work with other riders. And you can review films of your own runs so that you can really see how those cows work. Hey, by the way, Ben, uh, Julie Sachs says this is so helpful tonight. They're loving well, it. I'm glad they're enjoying it. Yeah. Let's, um, let's move on, if you're okay with it, and, and go to our Box Drive, Box Drive class, where sure. we'll incorporate the boxing we've just discussed, and we'll start to introduce going down the fence and boxing at the other end. Okay. That sounds wonderful. Um, talking about the box drive box for just a moment before jumping into the films and the videos. Um, 
you know, a slight slight difference in, in the style of boxing perhaps is that we're preparing the cow for the fence work. And, and when you're only boxing, uh, you're thinking of it over a mixture of defense and offense by staying away and stepping up sometimes and, and just holding your cow and really exhibiting a lot of cutting style moves in the boxing. But as we prepare for the box drive, box drive, uh, if I said that as a correct amount of times, um, you're really working on preparing your cow to stay on the fence. And this class is to be similar to the full fence class um, in preparing the riders to drive the cow down the fence correctly and then release the cow. So in our boxing, we're gonna see a little bit more driving. Uh, and I really think of like the ideal run in my mind when I'm exhibiting this class, the cow comes out and I'm gonna have maybe 10 to 15 seconds of holding the cow in the middle of cutting. And really, ideally, that's when your cow is going to have the most sensitivity to a horse and the most respect for a horse in the first 10 to 15 seconds. And after I've got control and I've stopped the cow in the middle and I've exhibited some cutting moves and my horse looks cowy and my horse has some eye appeal to it and it controls the cow, then I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to release this cow and drive it back and forth on the short end before I go down the fence. Because if the cow is still pushing on my horse and it's pushing me towards the middle, when I come around the corner, the cow is going to run to the middle. And that's all I've trained the cow to do. So I must box the cow until it goes to the wall and it stays on the short wall for a pass or two. And that's my goal. Like, Within 10 seconds, get control, push it to the wall, drive it back and forth on the short wall for another 10 seconds, driving the cow and then stopping it before the corner. And then starting on the, on the far corner from the wall, I'm gonna drive it down. I start by driving it around the corner in the boxing, setting up that first drive. And in that first drive, I want to be close. And I really think of my, like say I'm gonna drive the cow down the wall, I'm gonna have my foot near the cow's flank and my horse's nose holding the cow on the wall, but I'm very close to that cow showing complete control. And I'm driving the cow past the center marker. Now somewhere past the center marker, I'm going to stop my horse and release the cow. And I think this is a gray area where we sometimes get hung up because if we, drive the cow all the way to the new end and the cow only sees the wall coming and approaching, it's going to rapidly run around the corner and back to the other end. And that's where we get hung up a little bit by not fully stopping and releasing that cow early enough in the arena that we need to release shortly past the middle marker to where that cow has a moment to lope to the end, turn to the right, and then settle in the center of the arena while we turn our horse and go catch the cow again. And that's really important to release early enough, getting that stop, release, and then catching the cow again to show our boxing at the new end of the arena. We talked about the cows earlier. If you're at the new end and the cows have been living at the end behind them, they're going to try running back hard. They're going to be pushy. And you're going to have to stay really accurate and aggressive to hold your cow until you can bring it back down the same fence. Uh, you want to box it sufficiently, and we'll watch some tapes talking about that, but then also drive it all the way down past the center marker while we come to our complete stop or the judge blows the whistle. That's great. So, Ben, on that, on that stop, just you're talking about that right now, on that first drive down, mm -hmm. is it a full stop, a partial stop? As a judge, what are you looking for? And as a trainer, we know what we're looking for. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I'm speaking to, like in my mind, the ideal run in the ideal situation. And that would be that they do come to a complete stop. Like ideally, the cow is on the wall, the horse and rider are driving the cow. They're very close to the cow, showing complete control. As they approach the end of the arena, past the middle marker, the rider says woe to the horse, slightly picks up his reins, and the horse slides to a complete stop, very soft in the bridle, willing to slide to a stop. And then just as soon as they're done stopping, 
they reposition and control the cow. Now, I understand that sometimes your cow does not allow you time to do that. Whether we got too close to the end of the arena or whether the cow is just super pushy, we may not have time for the ideal run. And at that point in time, as an exhibitor, again, being in the saddle, I'm thinking this cow's pushing to the right. I'm not going to have time for a complete stop and reposition. So I'm just going to slow my horse, showing the judge that I'm checking off and repositioning to catch this cow and stop it in the boxing. And that's all the cow is going to allow me to do. Uh, as an exhibitor, uh, it's less than ideal, but it is surviving the run. From the judge's perspective, I think the judge has taken into consideration that this cow was never going to allow that horse to completely stop and regroup. So the rider adjusted accordingly and then got in position to stop the cow, but it only had a momentary hesitation before it turned to the right. And it's really going to be arena awareness. If the arena is rounded corners or square corners, if it's a shorter pen, that's going to happen sooner. And really when you release your cow, ideally stop, release, catch it again. But all, there are times when your cow isn't going to allow you to do that. And that's using your cow sense and horsemanship to say, this cow's not going to let me, I'm just going to slow down and catch it again to survive this run. Still box it correctly. You can still score well. You're just not going to have that big stop. Okay. Jill, do you have some videos that we could maybe bring a little bit of this to life and Ben can comment on what he sees? Okay. Ben, that's awesome. Well, and it's, it's a lot of information and, and sometimes it feels like, I don't know which one to do right here, but again, I think as an exhibitor, the more you can sit and watch these classes and really study the cattle to say, where's the cow going next? Where's the horse going next? If I were out there, what would I be doing? And really yeah. thinking through the run and putting yourself in the shoes of the rider and in, your, in the horse out there, it's gonna help you show better as you get out there. So here, our boxing is starting off well, and, and we have a, a horse and rider driving this cow back and forth across the arena. I like how they're driving a little bit farther. This is good. We're now getting closer to our cow, and that's something we want to see is as they prepare for the drive, they are getting closer to their cow. And notice he started the cow around the corner. Great way to start this cow. And, and here, if we could be a little bit higher, perhaps we could keep the cow on the wall, but we sufficiently boxed it. We kept it on the same wall and now we're reboxing again. And, and this was a good use of the arena where the horse and rider did get their square stop and repositioned, but it maybe wasn't on the wall the way we'd like it to be. And we're driving the cow back. Um, again, Notice this horse and rider are more behind the cow than they are beside it. Uh, and what we're thinking about is like your, your position on the cow again. So if you're behind the cow, all the way behind it, you're allowing the cow as the steering of the front of that wheel to go wherever it wants to. It's going left or right because you're directly behind it. But if you are more up on the cow's shoulder, you're approaching that stop zone as you ride past the shoulder, stopping the cow and making the cow turn. And we're riding that bubble. So as we get ready to go down the fence, we're riding the bubble of driving it and pushing it towards the fence without stopping the cow. Because if we, if we ride what I think of as like too high, too high up on the cow's eye, it's gonna stop. But here we're almost too far behind the cow. Notice how much separation there is between that horse and cow. By being 10 foot behind the cow, we can't control where the cow's going. It's controlling us. We're on a one man cattle drive in the middle of the arena, hoping it runs towards the other end because we're no longer controlling it. Here again, the cow is beating us back to the other end. We didn't really control the cow. We're salvaging the run the best we can. But in this situation, the cow, is so far in front of the horse that the, the cow is controlling the run. I think that what you just said is so awesome because, you know, as a rider, you might think a little bit about a previous run you had where you 
kind of went around to the corner. And then as soon as you rounded the corner, the cow came to the middle. Well, it's a sure tell sign that it's likely we were too far behind the cow. If it stops before the middle marker, we might have been too high or too far uh, to, to the cow's eye. And that's the word that you use. And I think that's great. I mean, that's just an easy way for folks to think about it, just how you said it. Well, and one of the other things we look for, Shannon, when we're boxing, and one of the things I want to feel for in a cow is if this cow is quick to stop when my horse rides past the shoulder. So if we're boxing and we're nose to nose, we're even with a cow. And as my horse's nose rides slightly past the cow's nose, this cow stops immediately. Well, I would describe that cow as a cow that's quick to stop. It has a lot of respect for the horse's bubble. And as that horse just barely gets in front of it, it slams on the brakes. If you're feeling that in the boxing, that's a mental note to yourself to stay behind the cow down the fence, right? So I would right. describe that cow as a very stoppy, very quick stopping cow. So as an exhibitor, you have to say, hey, this cow's quick to stop. I need to be careful not to get too high or up on top of this cow too much because it's going to stop and duck back. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that tells you stay a little bit farther behind the cow's shoulder, because if you approach the cow's shoulder, it's going to stop. And that's where I think of behind it or up against it or slightly in front of it or higher on that cow's body to push it to the fence or to get it to stop. And that's the control that we're wanting to watch for and read in the boxing so we know in our drive where we need to be on that particular cow. That's great. Jill, can you cue us up another one? Seems like sometimes it's just real easy to ask yourself, do I need to try to get this cow stopped and controlled? Do I need to drive the cow? Like that's part of the whole reading process is what do I need to do with this cow right now and know that we're, we're gonna learn by making mistakes and we're also gonna learn when it goes great. That's exactly right. Yeah. And sometimes they just flat fool you. You know, you think they're going to do one thing, they do something completely different. Uh, we've had a bunch of docile uh, black Angus cattle. The next one comes out and it's wide open, running like a deer. <laughs> and sometimes they just trick us, but the more we can study it, uh, probably the better we're going to be at it. Yeah. So my screen's a little black here. I can't quite see this run. I'm guessing it's in Fort Worth. Um, but uh, there we go. There we go. So, yep. Um, so this, this horse is exhibiting a lot of cow sense and this rider stepping up to the cow's eye quickly here. I've gone black again, um, but looks like we're stepping in and taking control of this cow pretty quick. I like that. Uh, here, that, that cow was really quick and the horse and rider were right on top of that cow and staying nose to nose. Notice how quick and accurate that turn was. Again, we think of them being a perfect reflection of each other. And really this horse stepping out here right now to stop that cow. And then it starts and then stops it again. So we're getting lots of control out of this cow. It started off kind of moving more wall to wall. And then we got right in behind it and started to control it. Now for our drive, we're driving it down the fence. The cow started towards the center of the arena and the rider stepped up to gain control. And even in our drive, like it had a correct stop. Now being real picky, this horse could have held the ground a little bit better in the stop. Like it tapped the ground twice. So maybe we're not plussing that stop, but the drive was good. We regained control. And now we're boxing quickly on the other end. Good, seeing lots of control. We almost lose this cow right here, but we jump right back up on it to stop it and maintain an aggressive position. And then even here, the cow's um, pushing on us and we go ahead and almost that situation where you can decide as a rider to say I'm going to leave my hand down I'm gonna go stop this cow again or hey I'm pretty late to get this cow stopped so I'm going to pick my hand up and get back in drive position and that's what she did right there like she went from stopping it from going down the wrong fence because we want to drive it on the same fence both ways so she stops the cow from going down the wrong fence 
And then she drives it by picking her hand up and getting behind the cow, just slightly behind the shoulder. She's back in drive position. And really uh, just showmanship and awareness took this run from what could have been a big miss and, and, and the low scoring run back up to a positive one because she decides to drive that cow back at the last second across the line. And here again, uh, this horse is exhibiting a lot of cow sense and a lot of control over this cow. We're driving it, we're stopping it. We're driving it and we're stopping it. And we're training that cow that as the horse gets in front of the cow, it stops. And you'll notice this horse did not fade away as it was boxing. It stayed close and got closer to maintain more control. Even as this cow starts into the corner, this cow hesitates for a second and then starts to pick up and that shows a lot of rate to not run past a cow. You really have to read your cow as you start into the corner and match their speed in the rate, the track and the rate to drive it to the other end. And here again, we're seeing that control. This cow gets tricky right here. We're gonna run over there and stop it against the fence immediately, staying with our cow. Now right here, we pick up and then we get behind it for the drive. And by kind of picking up our hands and getting behind it for the drive, it's indicating to the judge that I'm driving it back now. Um, I didn't get beat, I'm driving it back. And that's just a showmanship place there. When you're boxing at the other end and you feel like I'm about to get beat and I'm about to get beat, but it's down the correct fence. Now there may be times if you can get beat down the correct fence, how did the judge know you got beat and you didn't wanna drive it? simply by where you position yourself on the cow in your body language. So if the cow beats me down the correct fence, I may have known I was beat, but if I, while boxing, stop trying to play defense and I pick my hand up like now I'm driving it and I slide my horse in position to drive it, the judge doesn't know if I'm trying to stop it or if I'm driving it. So. If I pick my hand up and slide behind the cow, now I'm driving. And you can take it from a big loss of working advantage and losing a cow to redeeming your run by getting in position to just drive it back down the same fence. And that's really that, a place to, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, go ahead, Shannon. I would say this is a great time to, to I think, bring up the new rule for the box drive, box drive um, for this next year. Um, where the rule book says while boxing the cow at the opposite end, if the rider loses control and allows the cow to cross the center line, the judge will whistle the end of the run. The rider will receive off pattern penalty for the run. And I think that what you just said would help um, uh, prevent that from happening with a lot of folks. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the place we want and then like this last horse exhibits, the cow starts down the wrong fence. And to allow the cow to go down the wrong fence again, well, now we're kind of at a loss of working advantage and we're losing some score on the control. But we stopped the cow before the middle marker, like this new rule indicates, and had turned the cow before the middle marker, regaining control, and then stay with that cow, driving it back to the other side, and now goes ahead and gains control of that cow driving it back past the middle marker. Yes. So was it actually, like we look at that run, was it our textbook um, around the corner, perfectly down the fence? No, nope. but she showed a lot of courage That's and, right. a lot of, and, a, and a lot of, of control of that cow. That's right. And that's just like I said, it's one of those situations, it's not our ideal run, but it can still be a good scoring run because like you said, she's being aggressive. She's being bold. She has a lot of time work. She stays close to her cow through the run, lots of control. And on a, on a tough cow shows some eye appeal and some degree of difficulty. So it can still be a good scoring run, even though it wasn't textbook perfect. Yeah. Now, if she had given up and let the cow beat her, um, then this next year, that would have been an off pattern if she would have Correct. just allowed it to go. Ben, how about um, your experience in arenas, because we have some that we show in, that are more rounded or oval and how yep. cows react versus more of a kind of a wide square pin? Absolutely. 
Um, what we think about mostly in a rounded cornered arena, uh, like, like perhaps the Justin or in Fort Worth or the Coliseum, we don't have a flat wall to drive the cow in the boxing. So what happens, you think about it, uh, from the center gate, which is 10 or 12 foot flat, and then as you exit the gate, the cow is coming at you. So if you keep the exact same angle or you, you change to match the cow's angle, now you're both facing the rounded corner going down the fence too early or prematurely. So it's very important that you step in and then move your horse away from the cow. And, and this is an area that we see a lot of riders, um, they'll move away from a cow, but they'll move their horse's shoulder away from a cow. And, and what happens if you shoulder away and you tip your horse's angle away from a cow, it makes it extremely difficult for the horse to come back to the cow because they're over rotated away. And um, one of the things that I really try to think about, and um, this was brought to my attention by Kelsey, um, Kelsey Kuhn in the office there and just had a great point about keeping your horse, horse's feet on a line. And here we've got an awesome picture that Jill drew up for us. I mean, great artwork, Jill. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> and if you think about our cow being in the center of the arena and we have a straight line across the arena, we are keeping our horse angled at both corners. And you can see how we would think of a line drawn between our horse's legs and our horse is straddling that line. And what you're really thinking about and what you hear a lot of people say is, Use your cow side leg. Well, if we think about our cow side leg, pushing the horse's rib and hind quarters slightly away from the cow, that allows our horse to still stop square, still stop straight on the end, but it gives him a shorter angle for the turn. And this is really ideal, especially in a rounded corner arena that you have to use your cow side leg to move the hip and rib cage away so that when you stop, you have an easier turn and less of an angle. And if we think about the opposite of this, like if we were to angle our horse away from a cow or straddle the line the opposite direction. Oh, great picture. You drew this so fast, Jill. This is awesome. <laughs> She's talented. She's so good. Here we have uh, the angle and the line that we typically see. And if you think of this horse aiming towards the left side, like it's going towards the left and we get our shoulder facing away from the cow and the horse's head is to the left, pointed down the fence. What we've really, we've opened up a door. And if you think of this line as your door, the plane that you were on, you'll notice from the top left-hand screen, we have almost swung the gate open and allowed this cow to run past us. Does that make sense? That the right side is closed now, but this left side where the cow's at, by facing our horse away from the cow and angling away, we've now opened up the door for the cow to see the daylight and run right past us. The cow feels a release of pressure and it runs closer to the wall and tries to scoot by us. So when our horse is over rotated or slightly angled away, it gives the cow too great an advantage. If we keep our cow side leg pressing our horse's hip slightly away, especially in a rounded corner arena, it gives our horse the angle advantage. And the boxing really comes down to that angle advantage. And you'll find the more you practice this and think about that line in the pictures, the way it was drawn, that it will really help your horse and you feel more confident. You'll take a tough cow and say, I got him. I'm at a good angle, I can control this cow, versus going, oh no, I'm facing the wrong way and now it's behind me and oh, I lost my cow. So really think about that angle as you're boxing and think about keeping your horse angled into the corner, straddling the line correctly, and it's gonna help your boxing immensely. That's awesome, that is awesome. Jill, let's, uh, let's look at another run here and see if we can apply this straight line or um, if we're a little over rotated, let's see what we have next.
So here we're stepping in and we're starting off nose to nose with this cow. I like how we're starting. We've got control. We're starting to work our way closer to this cow. So that's good. Our cow is now heading back towards the wall. We like what we're seeing here. And we're starting to step in a little bit closer. This cow is quick to stop, guys. Notice how this cow puts its front feet out immediately and stops when we were boxing a moment ago. And it's mostly quick on this left side. Now here we're driving it to the other end is what it appears like. Now to me, we're a long ways behind this cow. Notice the cow ducking off towards the center again. And notice our horse kind of fighting the bridle, resisting the bridle. And we never do get our big square stop. So by not starting with that stop, we're losing our drive. We were losing our control. And we're not getting that horse on his hock as we start our new boxing. Okay. And it really all stems from the drive. Like, I like how we're starting our boxing right here. This is okay. This horse has his ears up. He's stopping hard. Notice how the horse stopped hard right here. This is what we want to see throughout the run that this horse gets on his hock and stops hard. But almost the longer the run goes, the more this horse kind of deteriorates his stop and some of how he was being soft in his face. So he starts to fight the bridle, then we're starting to lose eye appeal. Get closer, 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 way too far behind. We gotta be closer. We need to hold that cow on the left fence, way closer, or way too far behind. We couldn't even rope this thing if we had a 50 foot Riata, we're so far behind. And then, then we lose our stop at the end and we don't get stopped. And now this whole end deteriorates because we never got stopped with our cow. Uh, right here, our rider is looking at the ground through the turn. Guys, I just mean this in the best way possible. I've been there. You don't need to look at the ground. It has never failed to catch me, okay? <laughs> Stop looking at the ground. It's not going anywhere. The cow is the moving part of the arena. You also don't need to look at the arena fence. I promise you, the fence is not moving. It's the same place it was when you started your run. The fence isn't moving toward you. So when you're chasing your cow to the side of the arena, if we go back and watch that little clip again, Jill, at the very end where we lose control of this cow, our rider is staring at the ground. And if you're staring at the ground, your body will follow where your eyes look. Okay? That's the important message. <laughs> if the you're looking at it, that's the target. That's the target. Wherever you're looking, your body and your horse will follow where you're looking. And, and one of the things that helps me really watch a cow is I ask myself, what's the ear tag number? I ask myself, how many eyelashes does this cow have? What color eyeball does it have? Uh, does it have any funny marks around its face? And I try to force myself to watch the cow with that much intention and that much focus. Because if you'll watch a cow's eye with that much focus, you'll watch its shoulder, watch its front feet, it will tell you where it's gonna go. But if we start looking at the ground, thinking, I'm gonna catch the ground. If we get over here, watch, watch this, this rider starts looking down, whoa, there we go. And as we're looking down, our shoulder falls forward and we lose control of our cow. If we would sit back with our shoulders back and stare this cow's eye down, we could ride this turn and probably stop our cow in the middle again. And it's safer. Absolutely. Awesome. Jill, let's see another. These are good videos to watch. This is a lot of fun. This cow came right out to the middle of the arena to meet this horse. You'll notice how it's staying faced up to this horse. This is a lot of cow. So I'm telling myself, be very accurate right here. Don't do more than the cow is, just be accurate. Notice this cow had its tail in the air when it came out. That again is showing us a lot of feel. I'm gonna stay boxing here for a little bit longer because I wanna make sure my cow is staying against the fence and I have control before I go down the fence. So here again, we're beat down this fence. We're too far away. We're not controlling where the cow's going. We don't have the rate we need and we come to a complete stop, but there's no way to recover in time. And again, our cow wasn't taught to stay on the fence. And so it just runs right around us going right back to the other end because it wasn't taught to be controlled by this horse. So again, start soft with this cow's fast. This is a lot of cow. So be really careful as you start. Now, 
The first chance this cow goes away, sneak up to it again. Don't scare it, but sneak up closer and stay here driving this cow back and forth until it lets down a little bit more or until more air comes out. So as we're driving, we're watching the cow's eye. It's looking to the right, cow's looking right. We're not gonna have time to get a complete stop. Notice this cow is looking to the right the whole time. That's an indication to me as a showman, I am not gonna be able to come to a complete stop and gather this cow up because it's got its head bent to the right, beating me around the top of the arena. So as I come down the fence right here, I'm thinking, get right, get right, get right, go right. So I'm thinking left foot, move my horse to the right. And even before we stopped, we were beat. Does that make sense? We weren't in position to hold the cow at the new end. So by the time we say, whoa, we're so far out of position that cow's gonna beat us back to the other end. You know, those cows, when they come out like that, they can, they can feel very intimidating. Um, That's right. But as you had mentioned, if you're if you're if you're following a nice line and you're and what you said is to be accurate. So I want to spend a time talking a little bit about what you meant by accurate and you're patient. You can break the cow down. If you get greedy and too aggressive, then we'll have another problem. But could you because uh, you had said accurate, could you just share with everybody what you meant by be accurate on the cow? Absolutely. As we, as we look at this cow, we're, we're noticing when we talk about cattle, like some people would describe this cow as very hard. Like, wow, that cow was so tough. It was so fast. It was, it was terrible. I should have got a new cow. I'm watching this run saying that every time the horse gets slightly in front of the cow, the cow stops immediately. So that cow has a lot of feel, but we need to be accurate in that this cow is looking for the slightest mistake the horse makes, it's gonna run past you. So we don't have the luxury of this cow going away and being slow. But notice this cow, as soon as the horse gets in front of it right here, it stops again. As soon as the horse gets in front of it, it stops and goes the other way. So this cow has a ton of feel. If you have a good horse, this is the kind of cow you're gonna mark a huge score on because it's got so much feel Right here, we just never get our horse in position, so we get beat. But if we stay in position or stay accurate, so again, that cow's looking for a way out. If we get sloppy or we do too much, the cow's going to take the first window it has and run around us. Does that make sense? So if we're in position, if we're accurate, nose to nose, whoa. Come over here, nose to nose, whoa. Nose to nose, whoa and we stay really accurate, that cow won't beat us because this cow has a lot of respect for a horse, but it's quick. And this is a good cow if your horse stays quick. Right here, we don't stay accurate. Notice our horse turned to the right and the cow never moved. And then we jump back left. We aren't being accurate. We got sloppy and the cow beat us. Yeah, she was handling it right up to then. Yep. Um, that, is, that is absolutely great. So everybody, we're right at 658. If you want us to continue on, why don't you put a little note in the chat that say, carry on, carry on, because we can watch videos all night. And uh, if you've had enough, you can always see the recording tomorrow. But Ben, we should go on a little more, huh? I'm game. I'm fired up about cow work, and I apologize. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll get going, and it's so much fun to talk about. We're not even to the fence work yet, and uh, we've smoked through an hour. Boy, they're blowing it up in the chat. They're saying, keep going. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's talking. let's go some more. Sounds great. We maybe we'll watch a couple more boxing runs, and if we have some fence runs, uh, if we can watch some fence runs, or we can kind of briefly talk about some fence work and some position on on fence work and safety, we'll visit about that too. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be awesome. Whoa. This is fun, exciting. Okay, so if we can uh, pause and reset this one. This, this is a, an example of one of the places where a, um, a horse is going to be cow fresh. And sometimes we'll have that, like maybe our horse has cow pressure or cow anxiety or is cow fresh. And it's important that we shorten up our reins 
and we are prepared for this to to be ready for a worst case scenario if this horse jumps or spins or bucks that we're ready so start your run on a shorter rein start your run with your legs close and your hands short so that you can control your horse from spinning or rearing or bucking if the cow comes out and he's cow fresh. The other thing that will help, if you call for your cow a little farther back and you ride up to it. So it doesn't have to be at a trot, but you can walk up to that cow with your feet on your horse, driving him to the bridle. He's not allowed to play or overreact when the cow comes out. He has to maintain a soldier-like walk up to the cow until you're ready to work it. And that will help build really good habits in your horse. Um, you know, our boxing's okay on this run. Our drive is okay. We let the cow go from the corner. We didn't really drive it around the corner. And we could have seen a bigger stop. This cow goes all the way to the end and stops. And we really could have seen a horse that, that has a big stop to earn some credit there. And, uh, and here we don't really get in front of our cow. And here's a good example of a rider that to me, this rider was clearly trying to stop the cow. Okay, so if we go back, our rider is facing the wall, perpendicular to the wall, and really trying to stop the cow, and it runs underneath her neck. And that's, that's a showmanship place again, that if perhaps we realize we're beat closer to the middle, we can pick up and slide behind this cow to drive it. And then we're not losing it, we're just driving it a little bit early. That's great. So Jill, um, do we have some fence runs we can look at? And even if we don't have fence runs we can look at, we can talk about it a little bit and what, we, what we're looking for. Um, maybe while Jill's queuing up those fence runs, what we wanna think about and just have in our mind the fence work is an extension of what we've already seen in our boxing, our drive. And then we're simply, as we drive and stop, now we're stepping up past the cow's shoulder. And I wanna be careful to say that we're stepping in front of the cow. There are times that we will full on block the cow, but for safety, what we're thinking about more is riding past the cow's eye and hitting a square straight stop. Once we've got our stop on each, each fence turn, and then we can go to the middle and circle. Here, this horse is boxing well, and we're seeing this horse show some cow sense, some eye appeal right there in the center. We're seeing our cutting type move. Now, I want to see this horse drive the cow around a little bit. He's starting down the fence. We're very close to this horse and close to the cow. I like that a lot. Our fence turn is correct and accurate and tight. Notice how close this horse is to the cow and great work of staying close through both turns. And one of the things we think about as far as really watching the cow in our drive or our now our rake down the fence is matching this cow's speed in our drive. And that's what we're looking for. As this horse and rider start around the corner, really are the horse's feet matching the cow's feet? Are they side by side, evenly running the same tempo, the same speed as they come down here? So really good rate right here. This horse is quiet to his hands. This horse is relaxed and slowly steps by. Lots of control, very tight run, tight turn, and then steps by the cow again right here. Really great, ready to go circle, or in this case, I think he pulls his rope down and go rope it. And, and that's a, in, the, in the shot open, you can circle or rope. So either one's appropriate at that point in time. Ben, could you just revisit the idea of the square stop on the fence um, Absolutely. As compared to an angle up and why that's so important? Absolutely. But the number one thing that I wanna feel in my horses and coach is for a rider's safety. And our fence turn to really score well on our fence turn itself is to drive the cow past the middle marker and to stop the cow. Now, as we talk about, as we leave the cow's flank and our leg moves from the cow's 
flank, to the rib cage, to the shoulder, to the eye, somewhere as we think about crawling up that cow's side slowly, stride for stride, gaining inch by inch as we pass the cow, then the cow is going to stop. As the cow stops, our first move needs to be to sit back, push our feet forward, say whoa, and pick up our hands. And that indicates to our horse that it needs to stop straight and square. The first thing that should happen as the cow stops, the horse's hindquarters should enter the ground. We don't wanna see a horse throw his head in the air or throw his head down or shove his front feet down. We wanna see that horse, the moment the cow hits the brakes, the horse's hindquarters gets in the ground and enters the stop. Now, what a horse and rider should be looking for in a cow is that as they're running beside the cow, the higher they get, so again, that rider's leg moves from the cow's flank, rib, shoulder, your knee in line with its head. At some point in time, as you sneak up or crawl up the side of that cow, the cow is going to either put his head down and close his eye because you're blocking an exit for the cow. It cannot run forward anymore. You've blocked it and it's gonna put its head down, close its eye, and its front feet are gonna come out and it's gonna stop and turn. And again, as that happens, you're gonna say, whoa, and stop your horse straight. As both of you come to a complete stop, then you come through the turn. Building a really good habit of the horse entering the ground with his hocks down, which is the safest way to start your turn with the horse's hindquarters in the ground, and then the front end coming through with a cow. Sometimes what we see is a horse that drops their front end and they fall forward, bouncing on their front end, having lots of separation between the cow and the horse, or they miss the stop and they run by for a length by. And those are areas of penalties that we start to incur. But this run that we saw had lots of control, stayed very close to the cow and had a straight square stop. And we like to see that. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Jill's gonna cue us up another. One of the things that I like to feel as I'm raiding a cow is that at any point in time, I could say, whoa, and stop my horse immediately. So if my horse or cow, the cow were to duck in front of me, I want to feel completely safe that I could just say, whoa, and stop that horse at any point in time that I want to. And that's important for safety. And that's something I work on a lot at the house as I run and rate that cow is that without going by, I will approach that cow's hip or rib cage and I'll just say whoa to my horse and let the cow go that way I can always feel like I have control over my horse at any point in time to stop the run and that will help keep you out of a wreck that's an absolute great great point right there so like our boxing on this this runs okay we had a little miss earlier notice how uh, that that horse missed that cow earlier and we really had to rein him through and the horse kind of fought his face and resisted the pressure and that's a place that we're probably going to be a minus half in this boxing. Around the corner, we have okay rate. And then stop right here. We notice that the, uh, the horse shoots by the cow. So our first run, we had a really long rate all the way to the other end. We like seeing that because that's an area that we can plus is our rate. And this horse, it, it really it stops rating. And you'll notice the horse's feet really speed up and fly past the cow. So the cow's going about 10 miles an hour and this horse is going 20. Look at it. It blasts by. And our rider is looking up in the stands as the cow turns and we ride by the cow. And this is just an area uh, that we lose control and we have to set it up again. And because we rode so far by the cow, we lost control of the cow and we have to start over. And again, we need to think about wait, wait, wait and we have a better turn, and now we've got another turn. However, in contrast to our first run, both of those turns have lots of separation. And really think about that separation as the amount of space between the cow's nose and the horse's tail. How far by the cow did the rider go? And those are the things that we look for. How much daylight or arena did we see between the cow and the rider as they made the fence turn, all right? And those are areas of penalties. So as we make this first turn, how far past the cow, whoa, right there, 
we're almost a full horse length by the cow for a one point L and then a loss of control as the cow shoots to the middle of the arena. So again, the accuracy, closeness and correctness is far greater than speed. Really think about being accurate. It's not about going fast. It's about being accurate, staying in control and controlling your cow. We're overrunning our cow. We're missing our turn. We're losing control. We're going from a 70 to a 65 pretty fast right there. And that all came from lack of rate or lack of control of our horse. Yeah, that, that little booger really couldn't get stopped and turned when he's going 100 miles an hour. That's that right. That's right. For sure. That's right. And some, sometimes we see a horse do it on their own. Like in this case, the rider's got his hand up. He's trying to slow the horse down to the horse blast by. Other times we see riders cause a horse to do that because they shoot past the cow. They're, they're worried they're not going to make it in time. So they're barrel racing, kicking, trying to race by the cow. And sometimes they'll shoot right past the cow. And, and I can't stress enough the importance of the rating the cow, controlling the cow, and sneaking past it. Just like our first horse barely snuck by that cow to have lots of control. The best turns are when you feel that cow's nose against your leg. You're close to a cow. When you feel that cow's nose against your leg in the turn, you're close. And that's the position you want to be in. Yeah. And so Ben, in your experience, and it is as changes as, as Jill's getting us lined up with another video, but if we leave the corner late, we really have to play catch up. Where do you try to set your cow up to, to drive right to the corner and through the corner? Do you have a target in mind that would be helpful for folks? Thank you, Shannon. Wonderful question. After I have boxed sufficiently, and I feel like the cow is moving towards the wall and it's staying on the short end of the arena against the wall, at least from the middle, if not farther to the left side of the middle, I like to start moving towards the cow and getting close. And that's even uh, almost thinking of two tracking at times. So if you start him, you're two tracking over beside him to come around that corner and really pushing him to the corner and around it. And ideally, as I come around that corner, I am sitting back and I am taking a deep breath and I'm just telling myself to relax. I'm saying lean back, settle in, deep breath and, and track this cow, rate this cow all the way to the other end of the arena because that's where we get the most control and stay as close as possible, matching the cow's speed and really feeling stride for stride. Like my left foot, like this arena, we're making a left turn first. I'm, I'm imagining my left foot being directly on the cow's flank. And as the cow steps, the cow's front feet hit the ground, my horse's front feet hit the ground. And we are in time, stride for stride with that cow running to the other end of the arena. But ideally, I'm sitting back, my shoulders are back behind my hips, my horse is running on a loose rein, he's relaxed and running, and I'm sitting back going, all right, any minute now this cow's going to stop. And when this cow stops, I'm in position ready to stop with this cow. I think there are a lot of people squeezing their left leg and imagine that whole run you just talked about. <laughs> Perfect. And, and here's, here's our good run again where we've exhibited lots of control, we've stayed close to our cow, and our first turn really had lots of rate. As we came around that corner, we were very patient all the way to the other end of the arena. And, and, and talking about controlling that cow as we move towards the circles and for safety, we are re required one turn each way, but we can do multiple turns each way. So if if we needed to make more turns to make our cow safer to circle, we could go ahead and make multiple turns staying on this fence. So we have a left turn. Now we're gonna get our right turn. If we felt like this cow is still running very fast, I'm not ready to circle, then stay on the fence to make more turns. And that's again, back to the safety aspect of being sure to take our cow to a speed that we're safe to circle. And they were in correct position to circle when we get out there. And, and the same feeling as we leave the fence turns, we start talking about circling, 
I want a similar position as I circle. And as I'm starting down the fence from my right, where my leg is at the cow's flank, as I get ready to circle, I'm just gonna move up on the cow to circle that cow with my leg at the cow's neck. And it's important to bend the cow's neck around as we circle, because that's gonna give us more control of the cow. We don't wanna circle a cow too far behind the cow or too far back, because our horse's front feet can get tangled up in the cow's back feet. And that's the scariest place to be for safety because if our horse's front feet gets tangled up with a cow, it's, it's a possible trip scenario. And we've had a question about circling Ben. So this is a great time to talk a little bit about that. Yep. Here's a good example of a loop that we, we, we see a good loop here also on this, this run. Uh, here we are in the circles. Like again, that cow is pretty pushy. So she held her horse off and tried to get up around that cow. She's really getting up to that cow's neck and we need to get past the cow. There it was. And that was a really good move to get high enough on that cow's neck to bend the neck around. And that horse and rider both showed lots of control and degree of difficulty to get up past that cow's neck and force the circle. So here we're coming down the fence, good rate, long drive. Fence turns a little loose. So it means we just went a little bit past. And now our cow is out towards the middle. We're making a loop. We're regaining control by looping the cow around back to the fence. And that is legal. Coming. Yeah, legal. Yep, completely legal. Now, we could also, like right here, we can loop off of both ends. So if we needed to, we could have turned that one into a loop also. So we can loop off of either end and then go circle. But you required a turn each way. She did the required maneuvers, then she circled. And this cow still had a lot of speed and a lot of air left. So we get some credit for circling a really fast cow. But if you're not ready to go circle, you can loop your cow after each turn to regain control if you need to. A loop is not ideal. It's making the best of a situation where the cow's facing the middle of the arena. So again, like this turn, the, the looseness in our turn. So we go a little bit by the cow right here. We're a little bit late. The cow jumps over the horse's hip and shoots to the middle. So we do a loop, pushing the cow back to regain control. Excellent loop. Well done. Just an average turn with an average loop. That's so not credit earning, but we've maintained control. Now we could loop here. That cow's pushing us back to the gate. If we're on a greener horse, I'm thinking loop right there because our horse may not be ready to take this fast of a circle. But this horse is handling it well, and we know we've got a good circling horse. Then step out there and go circle. Just make sure that you get to the cow's head, push on the head, not the rib cage. You cannot turn a cow by pushing on the rib cage. And that's the place we see a lot of people get in trouble is trying to turn a cow at the rib. All that's gonna happen is the cow's gonna stumble, your horse is gonna stumble, and we cause an accident. So for safety, really think about getting up with your knee at the cow's eye to bend the neck and stay safe and stay in control. Wow, that was amazing. That's a lot of information. We're throwing them at them fast. I guarantee you they're going to dream about cows tonight. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So listen, man, we've had a couple of questions. Um, yeah. um, uh, one, one of the uh, participants says that they've they found that a dead or a slow cow is just as frustrating as a crazy one, what's the best way to handle a cow that just doesn't want to move? Great question, 100% agree. Because if you have a really uh, quick, accurate horse, you wanna show that horse off on a tougher cow. If you draw a dud cow that won't move, um, sometimes the best thing you can do is, is show your horse. And if your horse is trained to really um, move off of your leg cues, that you step to the cow's head and it doesn't move fast, but all it does is move its head left or right, then you could almost, in a sense, uh, over move your horse or false move your horse a little bit on a dead cow. And again, this is a place you wanna be careful not to overdo it, but if your cow's dead and your horse is a good mover, you can false move your horse a little bit. Like the cow's head went to the right, oh, my horse jumped all the way over there. Now we're jumping all the way back. And you can do some extra moving on a dead cow to try to make up for it. 
And it's a situation where you ride in, you're reading your cow and you're going, this cow's a dud. It won't move. It's dull. I'm only going to mark a 69 at best on this cow. I'm going to do my best to make up some ground. So if I do a little extra and I'm super aggressive, I step in, I jump away and I step in, I jump away again. I might be overdoing it a little bit, but maybe I get to a 71. And that's really good if you can take that cow from a 69 to a 71 because your horse was listening to you. That's great. That is great. So those, those uh, false moves are just additional energy you're applying to the, to the cow in the hopes that you can get something to happen. That's correct. That's correct. And again, only on a dead cow with a good horse because otherwise you're going to get beat on a wild cow by doing that. Yeah. Um, so Ben, um, a couple of things for the last part of our plus one webinar. Oh, but before that, can I ask one more question of you? Yeah. Yeah. What advice might you give uh, folks listening tonight if they really want to get good at cows, but mm -hmm. maybe they don't have cows at home? What advice could you give them? The, I think truly when you're at the show, um, think, I think of the cow work really at, at, at any show that they're doing the cow work as a place. It's a free clinic for you to go sit and watch. And if you can get close to that boxing end and you're sitting in the stands and you're just really focused on the cattle, the game that I play is in my own head as the cow comes out. What type of cow is this? Is this cow fast? Is it slow? Is it dull? Is it sensitive? What type of cow is this? How long would I box it? How long would I drive it? What would I do if I were out there? What would it feel like if I was out there boxing this cow right now? How would it feel? And, and do that for three or four sets. Do that for half a day. If you've got time at a show, sit down and watch those cow runs like that, wrapping your mind around it. So really the mental training, because again, we don't all have cows at home to work on a regular basis. So if you can watch some runs and put yourself in those shoes mentally, it will help you fast track your learning. That is awesome. That the, the games that we can play in our mind to help our, our real game. Absolutely. Okay, so we have two more nights for our plus one webinar series. Next Tuesday, we will have Bozo um, helping us with ranch riding and ranch pleasure. And then two days later on Thursday, we'll have Ben and Bozo join us and it's a panel discussion meaning that you have the opportunity to submit questions that maybe haven't been answered thus far, and Bozo and Ben will both answer. So you are going to receive an email tonight around nine o'clock asking for your questions. We will take those questions and we will queue them up for Bozo and Ben. We are super excited to hear from these exceptional horsemen um, answering all our burning questions that maybe we haven't gotten to yet. So Ben, you were awesome tonight. Way to rock it. Thank you. It was this really fun to talk about the cow work. It's something I'm very excited about. And I hope this just helps you guys feel more confident and more aggressive when you get out there. Best of luck with it all. We look forward to seeing you in the next show and we can keep talking about some cow work. Good night, everybody. We'll see you soon. Good night.